Let's start with different products first and just kind of giving a general breakdown. We'll pull up some numbers as well. This way people can actually see if I'm paying a dollar into the policy, what does that actually look like for me, the consumer? So we've got two policies up here. We've got a whole life 100 policy. This is often referred to as a traditional old school whole life insurance product. What the 100 represents is literally the age you can make premiums to the policy if you wanted to, until you're 100 years old. No one really does that, <laughs> but that's how long you can pay into it if you wanted to. Versus this guy, high early cash value, short, heck be. Not many companies offer this type of product. It is a whole life insurance product. Uh, if you look at companies out there, you'll have Mass Mutual that offers it to just about anyone of any funding level. If you get to higher dollar amounts, you'll see a lot of corporations purchase these type of types of products. As an example, Guardian has one that has a minimum base premium requirement of 100 grand per year. So it's a higher requirement. My point is, it is a whole life insurance product. You'll see it kind of in the name, high early cash value, how it works. But there are two separate whole life insurance policies. What we're going to look at in today's study is these two products with the same company, Mass Mutual in this case. So let's use a clean number of $10,000 per year, just in this example. So if you said to me, Steve, I'd like to pay in $10,000 per year to a life insurance policy, and my goal is maximum cash value. I'm interested in the traditional whole life insurance policy, and this high early cash value product is intriguing to me. When we look at the actual design, you can choose where your money goes. You can go toward the insurance premium or toward the PUA ride. Premium dollars with a whole life 100 product, the traditional product, do not show up in cash value in the first two years of a policy. Of a policy. So if your premium is $10,000, $1,000, wherever we set that base premium, you will not see it show up in cash value in the first and second year. Now, if we're looking at Mass Mutual, $10,000 is your total annual payment. That's the max you ever want to pay. The lowest we can set that base premium is 10%. That is as low as Mass Mutual will permit. And the premium does drive the death benefit heavily. But I know today's topic is heavily focused on cash value. Any questions on that piece or anything thus far? Nope, pretty clear. Okay, so if you've got 10K going in, if 1,000 is your base premium, we will have a term rider attached. That could be part of the PUA payment as well. But in short, I want 90% or as much money as I can allocated toward that paid up additions rider to beef up my cash value. And why we want that term insurance rider, in case someone's new, is a term insurance rider is a cheap way, if you don't like the word cheap, a cost effective way to add more life insurance and the death benefit, the total amount of life insurance we have has a direct relationship to that MEC limit. In short, we're preventing a taxable event from occurring. Questions on any of that? Make sense? That makes sense. Just breaking down the initial structure of any policy regarding whole life, premium, PUA, that's where my money uh, can only go into those two locations. And then of the, of the PUA, there's a, a second component, which is term insurance, uh, which is involved in that nine grand. So nothing above 10,000 bucks, right? So it's not like 9,000 goes to PUA, 1,000 goes to uh, base premium, and then another couple hundred dollars or so goes to term. So that would be more than 10K. That's not the case here. It's 10K total, where of that nine grand, majority of that's going to cash value day one, um, and then it's covering the PUA expense charge as well as that term uh, cost to come up with that, that death benefit, that total death benefit. Correct, you got it. The main takeaway, again, as we once we transition into comparing these two products is Whole Life 100, a traditional product, the base premium, zero cash value in the first two years versus say you've got the exact same dollar amount going into a higher early cash value product, 10 grand per year. So how this will work, if we do the same thing, minimize that premium, say it's $1,000, 
What you will see with this high early cash value product is approximately 80% of the base premium shows up in cash value in the first year. If you have an older product that was purchased before 2022, used to be about 90% the first year. <clears throat> but with product and industry changes, it's 80%. So 10, if a thousand dollar premium goes in, I'd have about $800 of that in cash value. $10,000 premium would result in about $8,000 in cash value of the premium piece alone. That is excluding any PUA payments. Questions on that? Okay, so just to be clear, just by making a simple switch in the name of the policy option so the client can say, okay, yeah, I'm looking at this L100, and then I can ask the agent, hey, can you show me a HEC V design, or a, in other words, a high early cash value design, where just by making that one switch, however much money I have going to base premium, $1,000 or $10,000, uh, 80% of that would show up in cash value. And Chelsea can edit this. She's very good at that. I make that kind of mistake all the time. Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> One, two, three, take it away. Yeah, so the high early cash value by simply making that switch uh, for the where the client can ask the agent, hey, uh, this is an L100 design. Can you also show me a high early cash value design by making that request or heck V for short, 80% um, of the base premium would show up in cash value in the first year as opposed to an L100 where 0% shows up in the first year, right? That so that's that. That's the only switch that just occurred so far. Correct. Yep. All right. 100% correct. And the reason why that question comes up, why is there a difference there? Is with a traditional whole life insurance policy, whatever your base premium is, going back to the whole life 100 product, really how the insurance company would explain it to us is that they are going to overcharge you for the cost of insurance, the base premium in the first and second year. Whereas the high early cash value product, they're not going to overcharge us up front. What's interesting is you'll notice that the, the actual insurance charges are a little bit higher on the base premium. They're just spread out over the life of the policy. And it's kind of in the name high early cash value product. A lot of times what you'll see is very strong upfront cash values, not as strong long-term values, just because they're giving more upfront, but you've got a little bit more drag long-term. But to get back on track here, the main, main difference is you will see that base premium payment credit the cash value, the majority of it credit the cash value right out of the gates. Gotcha. So this allows for more cash value straight up day one, where that other $9,000 that's also going to PUAs, uh, mm -hmm. term cost, where you have that $800 guaranteed um, for the base premium. So okay. even if I had, a, let's say, a $4,000 base premium, 80% of that number shows up in cash value, the other, say, 6,000 in PUAs, portion of that shows up in cash value, the number would be relatively the same? Be very similar. Very yeah, similar. Got, yep. So question there is if you've got a high early cash value and if you have like the example we've got down here, 1090 design, meaning of the $10,000, 10% is toward the premium. We're minimizing that versus 4060. Correct. The cash values would be similar right out of the gates. That was your question. Yeah. Okay. Got it. That is correct. They'd be similar initially. Long term, you would see a difference from a, the consumer's point of view and the agent's point of view as well. Okay.